So since uh, this course is about uh, higher representation, we have a uh, higher representation. So uh, we have a fundamental higher representation. Uh, this will. Uh, so uh, if you remember uh, from uh, last time, and this was a motivation just a bit if the screen is coming down. Oh, down, yes. Again, the details of this proof were given actually in the uh, in August on uh, Arthur's uh, blackboard, I will give them directly to uh, William, I mean the preamble. The net part of this proof was that uh, after uh, removing uh, the common part, so after removing the common denominator, uh, the common, uh, common factors, uh, what we got was exactly the proof here, which functioned as described. Now what you saw once again was some normalization coefficients on the outside, which were the multiplicity of, uh, of uh, this uh, vector uh, E1 in each of the representations, one, two, three. Uh, and then uh, what you saw was that with a higher, higher theory, we obtain for something which is on the boundary we obtain inside um, a structure which explains the coefficients. So uh, the inside of a simplex here uh, was collapsing the boundary into nothing, which in quantum field theory corresponds to, uh, uh, to the empty space to uh, uh, the complex numbers, so it was collapsing the boundary into a complex number. Uh, these are these blades that you see here, uh, square and triangular blades. Yes, what you see something on, on the outside and the new part is inside and it does the processing. Uh, now, uh, and that explains uh, complex formulae like the one of uh, of uh, um, Wigner, of the Wigner 3J and uh, klebsch gordan which are some of the most useful in, in uh, quantum field theory and chemistry in the applied part. And as you can see here, the main uh, operation which appears, it's this magenta arrow here, is a tunnel which moves one blade from the right-hand side of the tunnel. It's a square followed by a triangle, yes. It moves it on the other side where it is this degenerate edge followed by the triangle. Yes, so it takes, uh, it takes uh, the uh, right wall here and it moves it into the left wall. Right wall into left wall. And the... Uh, uh, the coefficient is here, some coefficient on the boundary. The, uh, so then what, uh, what uh, happens is we, we did a big counting of the blades which remain. We had a factorial of the blades, yes? So, uh, and, uh, and with that we could, we could uh, even uh, build the formula if we didn't know it we could build uh, the Wigner 3J uh, symbol out of that because the terms uh, need to cancel. So we remain to this and uh, we look once again, uh, try, to, uh, try to take a good look at the tunnel. So this is a tunnel which moves the right hand side of the tunnel onto the left hand side, do you see? As this arrow shows. Yes, so this is a higher uh, variant of the uh, gelfand settling move for E1, 2, which moves E2 into E1, little E2 into little E1. So here it moves uh, a tunnel wall into another, into the right tunnel wall into the left tunnel wall. 
So, uh, uh, in order to work with such, uh, with uh, such structures, we need to uh, do a little bit of uh, labeling here. And uh, in particular, remember that we had a simplex like this. In general, here the picture will be for n is equal to 3. So this is 1, 2, 3 is equal to n. And also 0, we are in. And uh, we shall take here, so this is SL2. Uh, uh, that's because the edges are divided into two. SL2 over or with subjacent here S L N uh, N plus one. Yes, so here we have SLN, SLN, this is fine. So here N is equal to three. So this would be one higher than usual. Uh, remember that we had here at the bottom an, uh, an intertwiner. And this one, we should keep the colors that we used before. This one will be uh, yellow. So this is an intertwiner and it can go toward the uh, red triangle here and toward the, and or toward the blue square on the other side. And as I said, it, it would continue afterwards, but we're interested in one floor. Yes, so this is how it would continue after, how it would continue afterwards. Yes, so this is a tunnel here. And uh, this is a tunnel, and we're going to give this uh, a name. So this would be E, the operation would be E A A prime. Uh, the position of it is on the position uh, one, two. So this is from the top one, two. And uh, a, a prime, where here A, A is a subset one, uh, is a subset uh, two, three, and A prime, which is a complement in one up to N, A prime would be the set one, so this will be written E1, 2, 2, 3, comma, 1. This is for the lower part. And uh, so once again, what we have here is the... Uh, uh, So at the top, which is one level, which is uh, height one, the height is measured like this, height one. This is uh, this at the top. So we have the triangle, the move is from zero to three into one and uh, into zero to three comma uh, one and it will go into two three comma zero one and at the bot bottom height is equal to two it would go from uh, to three comma zero one into, and I'm going to use into zero to three and one. 
and let's make the picture here. So this is the top uh, um, zero, two, three, and one. Do you see? We have here separated zero, two, three on one side and one on the other. So this must be the blue triangle at the top. Here. No, this is a height. Okay. Thank you. This is a height. Thank you very much for checking. This is a height. Yes, remember that uh, for the, the usual SLN, which we should put here, for the usual uh, Gelfand settling, we have, uh, we have some path that goes like this. And this is the height here. So here we are over, so this is SL4, so this is divided into four. SL4 over the usual SL2, this is the SL2 here, this is a Young diagram with, uh, uh, let's say, two, three, and one. So we have uh, none of these. We take one uh, generator here. Yes, which is, so this is V to the wedge two, where V is equal to C to the fourth, on which SL4 acts. Yes, and, uh, and this is read as E1. So the height is one, one, two, three, four. And the E is read here as E1, and this one is read as E3. And on the other side, this is E2, and this is E4. Yes, so what we have is, uh, in here is a vector E1 wedge E4. So these are the things which go from the right, like this. Yes? E1 wedge E4. And the Hodge dual is E2 wedge E... e this is, excuse me, E1 wedge E3, and the dual is E2 wedge E4, actually with a sign minus. Uh, the sign for the Hodge dual, I have some notes on elementary uh, forms, is obtained by putting them in order E1 wedge E3. So this is the original. And then the star. And then you, you see that you need to, to permute these to put them in the correct order. Yes, so this gives you a sign minus. So you put the original vectors, then the star vector, then the Hodge dual, and you permute them in order. Thank you. So, and, uh, and here, a move uh, like this is going to go into this. So let's keep the notation there. So this would be the blue part here. And this would be the red part. A bit orange here. So this part, so this is uh, the magenta thing which acts. And this is E. Uh, and let me actually do the following. I'm going to take it the other way. So this is... The ones which I take are the ones to, on that side. So this goes from E2 tens wedge E4 into E1 wedge E3. And that way, well, the thing that acts is going to be E1, 2, which takes E2 into E1. So in order for E1, 2 to act on such a form, 
E2 must be present. So let's write this rather than say, so E2 should be present and E1 should be absent. Otherwise you get two E1s, E1 wedge E1, which is zero. Yes, so this would go into E1 wedge E4. Yes, and this is here E2 wedge E4, wedge E1 wedge E3. Very good, the star. Okay, very good. So this, as you see, this one is here. You have E1 and here E2. Yes, and as you can see, the one, uh, the one that we are taking here is, so if we put here the code, the directions 0, 1, 2, these are directions. which are the unit vectors in SL2 plus 1. Yes, uh, 1, 2, and 0 at the top. So this is a labeling. And these are the directions here, 0, 1, 2. And uh, um, we take uh, as present are the things which are in the direction 0, 1, 0, 1. These are uh, in our space V to the wedge K and 0, 2 are into V to the wedge K star. Into our space star, yes? So it's one direction and the other direction. Uh, let me remark that this picture has not uh, been done in mathematics. So this, even in the case of uh, of the usual mathematics, this picture is a Gelfand setting, but in a completely new presentation. Very good. So. Uh, yeah, here we have uh, Hodge and times because here every, uh, so here every uh, uh, blade, we define the blades, remember two weeks and a half ago, every blade uh, here will, uh, well, uh, the, the wire, we don't have a wire, but the blades, belong to the blades here separate 0, 1, up to n into two subsets. Yes, so this is called a set in combinatorics, a set composition, uh, set composition. And we have not just blade, but what we have here is an oriented, uh, yeah. Well, uh, if we don't put the zero, this is, uh, this is oriented on the side where you have the zero. So you see that the zero moves from one side to the other. Do you see here? And uh, so this is, this is a move. Yes, it sends uh, zero to three, uh, and uh, no, the move was like this, but it's the same, I think. Yes, so it's the same. So this is like that and like that. Yes, so as you can see, the zero at the top moves from one side to the other, and that flips, that flips a blade, yes? which is the important thing. And uh, now um, let us, uh, uh, so we have then uh, in general, uh, a picture like this is a subset. So we, ha we, ha we are taking E A A prime on the, this is a height 
all the heights one, two, yes, which sends, uh, as we said, it sends uh, at the top, it would send uh, zero A prime, so level one, height one, it would send zero A prime into zero A prime, and I mean A and zero A prime, it sends it into zero A and A prime, and that height two, it does just the opposite. It sends uh, zero A and A prime into A and zero A prime. Yes, as you can see here. So at the top, it sends this triangle. On the other side, at the bottom, on level two, it sends this square onto the triangle. This is how they are labeled. Uh, so now, rather, I, I mean, since uh, uh, we will have to deal with this for the standard representation, for, for uh, generating representation, which is exactly the analog of the Gelfand set ring that you see there. That's what we want to build in this course. So uh, it will be important to take here sections. And for a section, what I mean by a section is we take uh, zero i and j. So this is where i, j, i is different from j, and i, j is in uh, one up to n. So you see, we take uh, at the bottom, we take one edge. This is just like a boundary, but of course a boundary is n minus one dimensional, it's the ultimate boundary. So for every i and j, we have such a section. And on this section, we try to see what exactly happens. And uh, what happens there, uh, look, uh, let's look uh, above, for instance, if we take uh, the section 0, 1, 2, do you see that's a 1 in front? Yes? Can you see 0, 1, 2 is uh, this here? 0, 1, 2, yes? And you see that you, you see a move from left to right. So what we should see on this is either we see a move like in the usual Gelfand set line. So this is, this is in uh, SL2 over SL2. And this is a reduction to Gelfand settling. I think this is an I. Gelfand settling. So here we see a move, which is this one, from two to one. Yes. Uh, let's take the second one which is uh, zero, one, three. Yes, do you see zero, one, three is the one in the back. And what you see there, so please, if you have any question, ask. What you see in the back is also this, yes. And do you see that is the, the, the face, the section in the back, yes. And then we have zero, two, three. On which, at least for these wires, we have nothing. No move. 
I mean, there is a triangle there, but it's degenerate and it does not give us wires. This boundary is not uh, the usual one. So uh, then what is the explanation of this? Well, our original partition was into one and two, three. You see, and uh, if we uh, take uh, I and J, so these are A and A prime. Well, A was this here and A prime. And uh, if we take uh, a, uh, an I and J, like this, one to two, then we see a move here, a tunnel. Yes, from two to one. So if uh, I is in A and J is in A prime, then we see a tunnel J to I, or rather the other way here. And uh, if uh, I is in the, the other way, obviously this is symmetric to permutations, but if I, J are both in A or both, so if both I, J in A or both in A prime, then uh, we see no move. So this is, uh, this is a way we... Uh, this is if you want the signature of a tunnel in the usual uh, Gelfan setting type. You take all kinds of sections, sections are two dimensional, and you see what happens. So, so you're able to construct this analogy with classical Gelfan setting with SO2 and the situation yeah. of In this case, we have only one section, so it's just one and two, it moves two to one. Right, so what we're going to have is now we need two uh, big things here. One of them is exactly this uh, E, but for, that, for the case, so we need now the case of the generator. And uh, we're going to do that. So we're going to take this EAA prime then we'll take the higher matrix. Remember the whole point of representation theory, as Arthur was asking, was you know, what does it do? You have a matrix unit and you act with it on a vector and you get another vector. So that's what we want to do. That's exactly what, but as you see, the things here are just a little bit, uh, I mean, they require more thought. So, okay, so now uh, this is our EAA prime. So now let us see what happens in the general case now. So in the general case, so here you go with one, two, uh, three, let's say, and this is zero. So we're going to take one, uh, unfortunately the model that I had was destroyed on the way, so there's no problem. However, we can use the chalk to, uh, to go instead of that. One, two, three. Let me emphasize here the directions which will be important. So. Uh, this is for our orientation. Uh, that's why I usually use three-dimensional models. If you can see, this is from uh, 3D. It's projection onto 2D, two dimensions. Yes, and as you see, we are looking exactly toward the axis of coordinates. So here we have not the top, but this is a base, the bottom part. 
Yes. Yes, exactly. So, but this is axis of coordinates. Yes, so when you look, this is actually why the simplex exists in any dimension. It is a face, it is, a, it's, uh, in every dimension you have the octahedron, which has the plus minus unit vectors, and then the simplex is a face of the octahedron. So this is, uh, you should imagine these are the 3D things, so these are orthogonal here, yes? And you're looking straight toward them, and they label one, two, three. Any questions? So these are the directions, yes? So these are the directions, and why not use the color for them, because we have a lot of numbers. So this is one, two, three here, the direction, and this is an extra direction, zero. For the height, now this one has a big, uh, big height. So it's not uh, edge two. Now, as, uh, as uh, Chase was asking, we need to put an intertwiner. And uh, so we need a fundamental, fundamental uh, intertwiner which is uh, at the base, on the base. Remark that this is exactly like in the Wigner 3J, yes? There was there an intertwiner at the bottom. Yes, so we have a fundamental intertwiner on the base. So this plays a role, this is, uh, so let's uh, check this. In the usual case, in the usual case you have here uh, a uh, column, so this is usual, this is over SL2, math over SL2. You have a column or a column of uh, uh, Young diagram. By the way, since this is representation theory, the Young uh, Diagram is made of dots. Each dot stands for for a uh, copy of V, which is uh, the basic space on which uh, SLN acts. So V is C to the N. So each dot is V, which is C to the N, on which our SLN acts. Yes, so this is here SL4. Here, and you have a number of such generators. So this is now the base. So this is again, this is a base here. And the object that you have on the base is uh, the vector space here, which is the, so one dimension high, it's an intertwiner. So this is a base. Now, um, what is our fundamental generator here? So it looks uh, something like this. We remember we did, we did the fundamental blades here. So these directions are some uh, affine uh, root, affine uh, uh, simple roots. Yeah, uh, well, in the, uh, we'll see, we'll wait a bit. So these directions are the are a fine, simple roots of uh, the SLN of the subjacent SLN. We have N of them, so here this is SL3. This is uh, SL, some big, uh, 
k over SL3 here. And the way to encode an affine system of roots, this is unfortunately not mentioned in the usual books, although it's the simplest way to see the simple and affine roots. The way to do that is to, uh, to take uh, this sequence here. So go, in this case, it's uh, one, two, three. So we, uh, you, you take a Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian, Yeah, we're going to take non-degenerate blades. I'm going to mention also the degenerate ones. Thank you very much. So we take a Hamiltonian cycle on uh, the simplex. One edges. And now the simplex one edge is, by the way, if you have here an I and a J, remember that we did here the directions, yes? So this is an edge like this. So this is an edge. Let's see what is this. This is here the vector EI, the unit vector. Do you see it here? We are in one dimension higher. So you're looking exactly at the corner of the room. Yes, so this is a vector EI. This is a vector EJ. So the edge is going to be edge I, IJ is going to be E I and we're going to take the edge oriented the other way nicely. This is better. Even the edge I J is E I E I minus E J, which is precisely the vector H I J. Yes, so the edge of a simplex is exactly the, uh, the vector hij, yes? So if you want uh, uh, an affine system of roots, well, the simplex itself is a two-dimensional part of a three-dimensional, of an n plus one-dimensional green axis of coordinates. So if you take, for instance, the equilateral triangle, you take unit vectors located like this, and you take a triangle joining them. Yes? So each of these vectors is EI. There's a unit vector, these are the unit vectors in one higher dimension. Yes, and then the edge as a vector is EI minus EJ. Yes, and EI minus EJ is precisely the uh, element HIJ, is a diagonal part of SL2 over C. So notice that here, these are, uh, that these are, uh, so this, uh, these are uh, actually the inner product between any two. So let's note here that the inner product inner product of oriented edges is here exactly negative one. Yes, because we take the inner product by moving one further, we put them with the same origin, and then the angle is 120 degrees, yes? So is uh, negative one along the cycle, uh, 
so in general, if uh, so, it is uh, plus plus minus one uh, for edges for edges which have a vertex in common. and zero for edges which do not exactly so a uh, hamiltonian uh, hamiltonian uh, let's write here to be clear uh, Hamiltonian path is the same as a system of simple roots. Of type AN and the Hamiltonian cycle is the is made by a fine roots. So the higher, uh, this is a part which uh, usually takes uh, quite a bit of time to get used to. I mean, uh, you know, working in the higher, higher case. So it's clear, right? If you have a Hamiltonian path, you have all the edges except for one. Yes, and that's, that's exactly a system of simple roots. So this, uh, in my view, should be at the very beginning of every uh, representation theory book, but uh, William, who is the one person here who knows representation theory, can tell us that it is in none. Okay, there we are. So this part is new as well, uh, the, the construction of simple roots. Yes, uh, now we need to construct this blade and its center. Yes, uh, now let me, uh, now let me um, uh, remind you the way to get coordinates in a simplex if you have a point uh, P in a simplex, then you can go, you can take here the volumes with maybe volumes of P with, um, uh, with each N minus one uh, phase. Uh, so these uh, volumes are the coordinates, are homogeneous, homogeneous coordinates with constant sum. Or you can, uh, if you divide by simplex volume, then the sum is one, yes? And uh, I remember that my first teaching assignment was when I was in high school and I had to teach, they said, something nice to uh, grade school, to elementary school students. And I think I did exactly this parametrization. So this, uh, this is something like uh, uh, Ceva or something like this, uh, some Italian name. Uh, in that case, the theorem is exactly the ratio here of this over the total, yes? Which is a ratio between the, the surface and, and the rest. Any questions? So this is a parametrization of a simplex, which we're going to use. And um, here now, if we go back down, let me write it again. Ooh, 
This is ah yes. Uh, uh, today uh, there were a lot of interruptions. I can tell you because I have a, I have a, a, a TV screen and only the computer was remaining. So uh, so uh, today there in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts, we have a lot of power cuts. But of course we shall not give up. And so we continue with our with our blade here. Let me make it a little bit more irregular, <coughs> like this. So this is our blade, and we have here some nice. Uh, and you'll see exactly how the arrows are oriented for this blade. The point is that now, for this blade, we have here some segments. So the edge is n, edge, no, edge, length, uh, I don't know, uh, capital N. So it's not the same n, n is the number of dimensions. So the edge length is capital N, remember that uh, we had here do you see here uh, capital N it was equal to 4? Yes, the edge length was 4. And now we need to, to put this blade. And can you see uh, three things which add up to a constant? Maybe I'll ask in here. Of course, the areas, but that's not what we work with. Can you see three things which add up to a constant always? Yes, which are? Which ones? Uh, uh, but which around the simplex? Hmm? Yeah, so these green things, the sum of these, do you see? So the sum the sum of the length of these is exactly n. Yes, so here there are, I think, two, one, and one. Yes? Right? So um, on each, on each edge, i, j, In the cycle, in the Hamiltonian cycle, we have a length, we have an integral, an integer, let's make it simpler, length. With sum of the length, is uh, equal to n. Yes, so here edge length n is 4. So you see a 2, 1, 1, yes? And then the, these give the coordinates giving uh, chords. So uh, they give, let's see, what are the coordinates now? You see here the coordinate here is 2. Do you see in this direction is 2? And in this direction it's 1, and in this direction it's 1. So the 2 appears is a coordinate for the previous edge. Of the center, but each length gives the previous the previous um, well edge let's say here previous uh, face
coordinate. Yeah, so these coordinates add up. Now, the next step is, uh, okay, so that was a question of William here. Uh, this simplex, let's remark here that the simplex could be a quotient with each vertex labeled by a lump. Yes? So, if we work with some degenerate blade, then we'll take, we'll work in a quotient, yes? So, for instance, uh, let's take the one that we had before. For instance, if we had SL2 over SLN, then uh, what we had before was A and A prime. Yes, and in this case, the Hamiltonian circuit is something like this. Yes, and here this is divided into two, and you have one length on one side and the other length on the other. Yes, so this is a subset. A is in the subset one to up to n. Yes, and remember that the number of such uh, that the total number, the number of such partitions of n into k parts, here k is equal to two parts, well, n into two parts, it's some power two to the n, the two to the power k minus one, but, uh, but the number in general is exactly what is known in combinatorics as the Stirling uh, two number of uh, n and k. Yes, I'm using the notation in Mathematica. So the second, the it's called the Stirling number of the second kind. Yes? And uh, for instance, uh, uh, let's be, uh, let's give an example as not to be abstract, which is useful. If you have, for instance, Stirling two of uh, four and two, this means what? We take a, a simplex and we degenerate it to two sets, and we're going to have exactly one, like exactly four of these, and we'll have these are uh, here. You have the uh, the simplex has six edges. That's why it's called a six J symbol. Here you divide them into. You take pairs of opposite edges, so there are three of these, so Stirling is seven. Yes? Uh, the Stirling number of the first kind has a sign, which we don't need typically, but it will count the number of blades, uh, non uh, the number of non-degenerate blades around the point, of all co-dimensions, in each co-dimension. Yes. Uh, yes, that would be that would be the same uh, for the blades. Exactly, the blades are unoriented, 
So uh, let us uh, mark this. Uh, we should mention here the blades are unoriented, and that is why they are represented by symmetrized trees, which are called forests. So the blades. Hmm? Yes, so, so a, uh, a blade is a co-dimension one blade, for instance, with which we worked here, is a division of the coordinates into two trees. So it has a, so a blade, so a co-dimension one blade is, uh, is given by uh, two trees. I mean, it's coefficients, uh, two trees here. So this is a forest with two trees. Uh, so the forest is symmetric in the trees. But each tree is anti-symmetric. Yes, and this is plus uh, lower. The order, you remember that they get lumped and so, which are averages at infinity of uh, different types of, of uh, leaves. Very good. So, uh, now, um, We have a blade like that at the bottom. Let us, uh, we need one more thing here. Uh, so once again, the orientation that we're going to use is such that the sum of these, uh, this is important, so the orientation uh, this gives the orientation of the cycle. Uh, because if you take the opposite orientation, you'd get 3 plus 3 plus uh, 1, plus 2, excuse me, 3 plus 3 plus 2, yes? Do you see the opposite, the complements? Uh, so that's kind of the Hodge dual. And 3 plus 3 plus 2 would not be n, but 2n. Yes, so there is one orientation in which you have that. So, uh, here we have these, uh, these nice segments. And we should... Uh, uh, edge, so this should be the length... Uh, uh, this should be the length, length ij, let's call it. So these are the, uh, this is I1, I2, I3, and so on, up to IN. Uh, so this is uh, the Hamiltonian cycle. These are the affine roots. So... Okay, something like this. And uh, on each of them, you have a length, L, len, uh, so on the edge, how was it, Be with the edge which goes from I to J, you have the length len IJ, the length here JI, so if it goes from J to I, well, let's just reverse the arrow here. If it goes from J to I, then we have here the length len IJ. Yes, so the length associated to an edge. Yes, and the sum of the length is uh, one. So these are the length for every edge. Uh, 
excuse me, uh, the base here. And uh, the, these, these are the vertices of, uh, these are the vertices of the N simplex of the N minus one dimensional simplex. Uh, this yellow should be right here. So these, these are, are vertices, and uh, so we have uh, some edges which are not part of the Hamiltonian cycle, yes? So uh, if you take all the edges, all the oriented edges, you'll get all the roots of type AN. So let's write here that all edges are exactly all roots of type a n minus one. Uh, why is it n minus one? Because you take uh, n minus one, uh, you take a uh, path, not a cycle. Yes, they have n if you add the, a fine root, right? So you're going to have here some edge. Cycle, exactly. That's a definition of the thing. And so you have here an edge, you see, between uh, an IK and an IL. So you have an edge now which is not, not uh, let's put this is IK, this is IL, to have the edges go to the left. Uh, so you have now an edge IK uh, I L I K goes toward I L. Yes, this is a, a root, not among the simple uh, fine. Yes, not necessarily. So if you take this edge IKIL, uh, the, you're going to have, as you can see, some uh, lower dimensional faces. Yes, every face is a circuit as well. Yes, so every, uh, every edge inherits, every, uh, every edge will subdivide the cycle into two if it's a non-trivial edge, and it will therefore give you uh, give you two faces. And so if you take it, uh, let's orient it in two different ways. For the bottom, you would orient it this way, and for the top, you would orient it this way. Do you see, do we have here a cycle, yes? And um, uh, let us take an example here. So this is a, uh, this is a 3D simplex. This is a 3D, three-dimensional simplex viewed from top from an edge. And we take the simple roots to be like that, yes? And it's going to have an edge here uh, at the at the top, and an edge at the bottom, as you can see, right? So, uh, and by the way, these are exactly the colors in which they come from the they're made of zones. Yes, but we're going to use here a smaller. Arrow, so we have uh, on each uh, uh, l our length, our little length. So let's say that the length is one here, is divided in four. And for, uh, oh, we do have actually, I think we, we have it here, right? Ah, oh, yes, there we have it. So you look at it this way. Yes, these are on the outside. 
they are the uh, the affine roots, the four of them, yes. And here you have some uh, shortcuts, some diagonals, yes. So you see here, if you have here one and one, 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 one on every face, that's going to give you exactly the point in the middle, right? You know, the length is four. So you have one here, one here, one here, one here. Yes, is going to give you some really nice blades. Remember that I mentioned in an earlier part of the course, the clock. And with a clock, let's mention here, so um, we have the clock. Here you have the segments Li. So here you have I1, I2, I3, I4, I5. Yes, and these segments are the, uh, the uh, oh, let's, let's take it the other way because if it's a clock, it should move clockwise. So uh, we take then this way, this should be, this should be the segment L, I, L, I, 2, I, 1. And this should be the next segment, L, I, uh, 3, I, 2, and so on. So the, this clock gives us, as you can see, very nicely, it gives us the, uh, it gives us the um, order of the vertices. Yes, because uh, the hands are marked. And it gives us the length. So the circumference is uh, actually our number n. Yes, so it's a clock with circumference n. Now this clock allows us to parameterize the blades in the following way. Well, maybe you, you can see what happens with the hands. So for the parametrization, of blade in simplex coordinates, in simplicial coordinates. Now here, this clock has different uh, ways of uh, being labeled, uh, forward or backward and so on. We have to be a bit careful here. Uh, remember that uh, the coordinate was given by the previous edge. So uh, in any case, uh, what you see here, so this is an affine clock. Uh, this is, it turns out to be an extremely useful concept in the computations, a clock. So, because it gives us parametrization and parametrizations. And the parametrization in this case, remember we have core dimension one blades, yes? So uh, there are segments which add up to one. That's just the general coordinates in the plane. So how many should hands should move? Can you see? So if, uh, well, first of all, the, in this case, the re it's only the relative orientation of the hands that, that matters, yes? And you need to, um, you see, if all the segments would change, yes? If all the segments would change, let's write better than just say. So if all uh, hands move, that would be, uh, that would be n minus one dimensions or n coordinates with constant sum. So that, if, if all the hands would move, then you get the whole space, 
our ambient space. So in this case, since we need the ambient space minus one, yes, then how many should move? Can you see? So what happens, once again, if all these segments change, the length is constant, yes, we get n, capital N coordinates with constant sum, which is exactly the root space of type An, An minus one, yes? So let's write here, this is a, a root space of the graph An minus one. Yes, uh, so we need something of co-dimension one, so we're going to keep two hands fixed. So we're going to keep, keep uh, two hands fixed. So we're going to have two arbitrary in turn. And you're going to have here some and here some others. Yes, and the hands, that's the important thing. Uh, remember that the blades were given by some, uh, some, uh, uh, by some inequalities, yes? So the inequalities are then precisely, ah, and you see I got it, well, the blades are going to move like clock hands. So the blades So here the blades move clockwise without passing each other. Yes, so these are the inequalities which define the, the blade uh, position. So remember that we have uh, cones, yes, permitohedral cones, and the equations of these cones are precisely this. So this hand moves like that, yes, and uh, so this length, so if it moves clockwise, yes, for instance here, if this one moves clockwise, then this is the first identity between these two blades. So let's say we have these two other fixed hands now. Yes, so this one moves forward. So here we have this one, I1 minus uh, I5. Yes, Xi1. Uh, so, uh, so this distance here is going to be, get bigger. Yes, only the last one gets smaller. So, so uh, this, this gives a, coordinatiz a, coord a coordinatization of the blades. Hmm? They, they can, if they touch, uh, then you are on the edge, exactly. So this is uh, beautiful. So if they touch, then you are on the edge of the simplex. Yes, so this gives you also the way they degenerate on the edge of the simplex, yes? as plates, no, they are the plates. So uh, this is for blades, and for plates you have the same, but for the plates, the, uh, you have a hand at midnight, fixed, so only the other blades are moving. Now, do you see, if you move here, yes, if you move with this, the, the first identity, let's, let's say that this is going to be, uh, I don't know, uh, one, and the segment is before, so the, this is a coordinate one, yes? The coordinates, so this is here x1, this is here x2 minus x1, x3 minus x2. 
Yes, so the equation here, so as not to be abstract, is x1 is bigger than s1. So the initial position is s1. S1. Do you remember these were the... Uh, this one is here s2. So we have then x... And uh, oops, this is x2 here, and this is the nice x3. See, it's better to always to write. This is s3. So the next equation is x1 plus x2 is bigger than s1 plus s2. x1 plus x2 plus x3 is bigger than s1 plus s2 plus s3. Yes? And what happens here with the hands? This hand moves forward, do you see? So x1, this s1 is the initial position. So s1 is the initial position, yes? So as this hand moves forward, x1 is going to be bigger than, than uh, s1, yes? Because s1 is the initial position. So, so this one moves forward. Is this part clear? Then the next thing is that this hand is going to move forward. But this hand is at x1 plus x2. Yes, so it's going to be bigger than s1 plus s2. Yes, and the non, uh, without passing each other, this is equivalent to stay inside simplex. Yes? So each xi is positive. So this is uh, each, each xi is positive, yes? So you see, this, this gives you a plate. These are those permitohedral plates which have an extremely rich structure on which everything is based. And uh, in the case, so in this case, you keep the zero fixed. You, you, uh, your, the inequalities are, the last one is at x1 plus xn is just the uh, capital. x1 plus xm is capital N. x1 plus x lil n rather is capital N, yes? Yeah, you keep the, the zero fixed, yes? There is a plate, right? Uh, so, uh, however, if you have a blade, you're going to take in turn, so this is in turn two fixed in turn. Yes, any two. So this would parameterize for a blade this edge, this edge, and this edge. For instance, here you have, uh, so keeping, keeping uh, in turn the thing. So, so if you are, uh, remember that uh, we have defined the blade as being uh, given by uh, Cartesian. It was exactly the span of subsets of a fine roots. Spans which have co-dimension, uh, I mean the given co-dimension, co-dimension one. Yes, so you take your fine roots, for instance, in 3D, there are four of them, and you take either three of them, yeah, that gives you a 2D. Uh, no, you take, excuse me, yes, three of them, uh, so, uh, no, sorry, two of them, yes, that would give you a 2D, a two-dimensional thing, yes, two of them. Uh, uh, any two. So you can take two which are on the cycle, those are at 120 degrees, uh, two which are not at the cycle, on the cycle, those are at 90 degrees. And amazingly, that uh, clock parameterizes for you perfectly the blade. Yes, so if you, if you just take the points given with those coordinates, then you're going to take the blade. So it's extremely useful if you draw it with a computer or something. And as William was pointing out, this tells you also where they intersect the boundary of the simplex and the degeneration to the boundary. So the degeneration to the boundary is obtained when two edges, 
when two hands overlap, yes? Now, if you want a, uh, if you want a, so this is co-dimension one. If you want higher co-dimension, co-dimension two is the same as three fixed, three hands fixed, yes? If you keep three hands fixed, then you have a, a higher co-dimension, yes? Uh, what happens if you keep all the hands fixed? It's a single point, which is a point in the middle, which remember that was the highest co-dimension blade. That was given by the forest, which had trees, one, two, three, four, each, each tree had uh, one leaf. So, uh, uh, okay, now here, before we uh, end this part, because we'll continue uh, next time, um, this move, so then we'll have the tunnel on this. And we're going to see exactly, it's a, it's a very interesting way in which the, the tunnel moves here. Uh, what we need is the coordinates, and you can guess them, the coordinates on this face, I, K, I, L. Yes, you see, since on every face, on every cycle, yes? So in, in every cycle, Uh, the uh, sum, sum of the length, yes, is, must be equal to n, yes? So this means that on this edge here, this length is a sum of all these. Because you see the total is n, yes? So if you take here this shortcut, since here also on this face, for instance, is a triangle, you see it is a boundary face. So if you have, if everything is one here, uh, we should use the, the power just to lift the things just in case. Uh, yes, oh, it's nice to have power. Yes, so this way we have length from outside there. Uh, so this would be important in the parametrization. Um, uh, so you can see here, for instance, the length are one, 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 one. So on each face here, yes, outside, uh, the length would be would also have to be some four. Yes. So if you look at it this way, if the length here one, 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 then here the length would be two. Yes. So the triangle would be a one, one, two. Yes, so that's what you see on the boundary. Is this part clear? So the, uh, the sum on each face of the bottom will be exactly, must be the same capital N, the length, the edge length, yes? So for instance, once again, if we have in the middle one, 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 yes, then uh, on this triangle we'll have one, one, and since this is a shortcut, the direction here of the edge is a sum of the edges that goes in the same direction around the cycle. Yes, so look once again. The direction here is a sum of all the yellow length which go like this on the cycle, yes? And this way, the other direction, this one, is a sum of these. Yes, so the total for that edge will be n. Yes, so that edge does not need to be oriented. So that's how we're going to, uh, uh, that's, that's what we're going to see on the boundary. Yes, and this is indeed how you see uh, an edge on the boundary. And here, of course, on the boundary, what you have is that two, two of these, a couple of them coalesce, a, a couple of them uh, uh, get together. Very good, so uh, what, uh, Yes. Well, higher math is higher, so it's uh, the. Com I mean, one one needs to. These these have required a lot of thought. Of uh, that's why they needed some time to develop. Uh, 
So now, you see we are in good shape. We, have, we are starting to parameterize, uh, parameterize something. And uh, the operator, uh, so now uh, we're going to take, you should uh, stop me wherever you want me to stop. Um, so now we'll have a construction which after a lot of thought in order not to uh, uh, you know, to keep uh, keep uh, track of all the uh, cultural sensitivities, we're going to call it the fir tree. And again, this is a non-degenerate part, but the, the uh, case of the degenerate part is is immediate out of this. Uh, so for the fir tree, um, let me take the correct color, which was on the bottom. We had an intertwiner, if you remember. So uh, on the bottom here, you're going to have an intertwiner. And uh, well, it looks like this. Remember, the edges are parallel to, to uh, excuse me, are parallel to edges like that, yes, so these are the arrows at, uh, uh, yes, so these are the arrows which have some n, so the length here is n, yes, and this goes from 1 to, this goes from i1, i2, in. Yes, and uh, the interesting part now, so we are taking inside a blade uh, which intersects the base. on the given generator. So you see at the bottom it should be exactly this yellow thing, yes? We also, in the spirit of Gelfand Settlin, we neglect uh, horizontals, which are things parallel to base. And so if we have at the bottom of this, if we have an intertwiner, yes, uh, how can it grow? And uh, with quite some work, which would take uh, quite a lot of time, uh, but one can show that uh, from one level to the next, that the following happens. This is the node. And the node will go into one of the directions. So the node will go into one of the directions. So this is in the direction I2. Three possible directions. Exactly, three possible directions here. As you can see, for instance, here, you should look at the model, that's why we have the model. Uh, from each point, you have uh, three uh, main directions. There are also other edges, here blue, which correspond to uh, special hyperplanes. But uh, uh, one can check that the, uh, uh, the conservation laws for blades do not allow the use of those. So we don't assume anything. We just want to see how this bottom blade grows. Yes, and it goes in one of the, in this case, three directions. Exactly. That's very, exactly. So there are n directions, 
And this is exactly, as you say, this is a Hodge, uh, this is a Hodge triality. So in the, uh, note that in the usual Gelfand settling case, do you see up there, uh, up uh, uh, there, yes, do you see the edges could go right or left? Do you see from the bottom? Right was E4, left was E4 was in the Hodge dual, yes, in the Hodge star. Exactly, you go right or left, and one is a host dual of the other, yes? Uh, so here, uh, here, do you see this one has uh, three directions, or in general, n directions. Yes, exactly, uh, this is automatic from the structure. So this goes into n directions, yes? And this is not just, uh, I mean, in case you have the, the uh, generator, the n directions are ordered. Do you see? You have a cycle here. Yes. So uh, maybe uh, uh, somebody. I think there's a British thing. The uh, is it a game of whist or something like this? Which, right. So so we have not just a f hmm? bridge. bridge. Yes, bridge is a more uh, intellectual version of uh, of whist. And uh, what you have are uh, people arranged in order. Uh, you see, because we have these, uh, this affine system of roots at the bottom, so the, the moves are always toward one side. I haven't played enough bridge to remember, but each of them picks a card from the previous uh, fellow in order, yes? In cyclic order. So, so this, uh, this could be very good for a game of cards. So, so this goes in one direction like that. And then, you see, it goes like this on every face here nicely. Yes, so it goes like this on every face. And uh, the, uh, so this is how, uh, this is one level exactly. And uh, the next it takes some other direction or maybe the same. Yes, so it takes uh, some other direction, and uh, it may take the same, and then, and then this. You see here, it hit the wall, and, and then this. Yes, so uh, the point is that the cyclic orientation remains the same, but it may degenerate as it hits a wall. Yes, when it degenerates, uh, one of the length is zero, the clock tells you exactly what to do, so, so, um, uh, the, again, what we have, we neglect here the horizontals, so, uh, so this, uh, we neglect the horizontals, and uh, what, uh, wait, so, so this is for the front here, uh, you see we'll have this, we'll have this, and then, now here it hit already this wall, and this is, this is what we see on this horizontal. And uh, here it also goes in the direction of, uh, of uh, some Gelfand settling up to the top. Yes, so this is how the fir tree looks. It keeps the same uh, uh, cyclic orientation, but it may degenerate. Yes, as, uh, as uh, some edge length becomes zero. So uh, here, this is a trunk of the fir tree. You see, it does look, so this is a trunk. Yes, and these are the, uh, this is the, uh, should we call it bulk or something like this? Uh, any suggestion here? English thing. Uh, hmm? Foliage, foliage is better, yes, foliage. That way we don't uh, uh, conflict with the blade or something like this. So, so this is a trunk, yes? And, um, and for the trunk, the trunk is in a, uh, is in a, uh, uh, is in a nice, uh, um, 
So this is the trunk. Uh, if the length are L, if the length are L1, L2, L, Lm, Lm, let's say, with the uh, sum of Li equal to capital N, yes, this is for the base, base coordinates. The base coordinates are these uh, length, Li1, Li, uh, Li1, I2, Li2, I1, yeah, Li3, I2, and so forth. So um, the sum of these length is one, and in that case, this is a parallelepiped which is exactly L1 by, by Ln. Yes, and the trunk goes from here. It goes in uh, each direction, in each of the possible directions. So you have the multinomial n by L1 ln. So this is a multinomial. Ln uh, factorial, these are trunk, trunk, uh, trunk uh, uh, possibilities. Which are exactly the vectors, nicely the vectors in our irrep generating irreducible representation. So in the case of, in the usual case SL2, you see there we were at distance two and two to, from the walls. Do you see up there? Yes. So those were two forms. So we are, were distance two and two from the walls. So you go two steps toward the wall, one wall, and two steps toward the other. So it means that you have differential forms in which you use two EIs. In a, so they're degree two, yes? So this is the one that appears in electromagnetics, for instance, F. So this is two and two, and this has dimension exactly uh, uh, the binomial, I mean the multinomial N choose two, two, four choose two, two, which is a binomial four choose two, which is six, yes? So the electromagnetic tensor, we see it as a, is a six uh, from which, uh, since one of them, one of the coordinates is distinguished as time, three of them are viewed as electric and three are viewed as magnetic. Very good. So, uh, so in general, here we have a multinomial. Do you see? If the base is fixed, yes. So, uh, these are the vectors. Uh, the, these are vectors of our higher representation. And uh, now, I think next time. We'll take, or well, maybe now, but it's a little bit late, yes? So, yeah. yeah, we have to stop. So next time, we'll take the higher matrix, yes, which remember is a, is a, uh, uh, is a period of the uh, root space. Yes, so we take the higher matrix. So you see in this case, the higher matrix is a four by four. So it's a rhombus four by four. Yes, with four things, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yes, so this is how the higher matrix diagonal looks like. So we have, so it has 16 uh, points on the diagonal, and we take an arbitrary ij here, and we wonder uh, how, Exactly, is this higher EIJ, this uh, higher matrix uh, unit, 
going to bend our vector. Yes, of course, uh, remember in the usual case, uh, two by two, uh, I mean, the, the, in the usual math, there are some differential forms where E12 is zero, yes? In order for it to be non-zero, it must have the vector E2, as we said, and it must not have the vector E1, right? And in that case, it basically it permutes the vectors E1 and E2. Yes, so that way it's guaranteed that it arrives exactly at the same place and it doesn't disturb the others. So what we're going to see is exactly how to make this. This is very puzzling because you see you have this. This is some multinomial here. Yes, and how exactly you have this. So this, you have this parallelepiped. How exactly would you take two points in the parallelepiped and make them act on this uh, fir tree? Yes, and uh, what we're going to do is imitate that's a fundamental idea in this. Uh, we have uh, seen already how it acted on, S, on uh, SU2, on SL2 over SLN, yes, on the little pyramid. And we're going to uh, construct that operator, uh, capital, uh, this one, EAA prime, one, two, yes. And it will have a very interesting form so this will be next time we construct the operator E A A prime on any two consecutive rows, uh, which will permute the two uh, the two directions. Yes, and we'll have it do exactly the same as here. So we should take a picture of this. It should do exactly like this. So if you have two sets and if you have a section which is in. Uh, with one leg in both, it, it moves, otherwise it doesn't move. So we have that uh, in terms of the order, and we, we shall exactly describe then what is a matrix unit. So this is, this is going to be extremely puzzling. So it's, a, it's like solving a big, uh, the whole thing is like solving a big puzzle. And this, uh, I must say, was quite a lot of work. I mean, maybe each of these ideas took uh, uh, as long as uh, uh, half a year or so uh, to to uh, find and develop. So, uh, uh, and then uh, we, we shall have, at the end of our high representation course, we shall have vectors and the, the generating vectors and the representation, so as promised. Very good. That is next time. Wow. Very good, so...